Engine swaps are one of the easiest ways to extract more power from a certain chassis, but when it comes to performing an engine swap on a late model car, sometimes things aren't quite as easy as you first think. We're here with Brian from Unicorn Garage and behind me is Ryan Turk's Toyota 86 fitted with a Ferrari 458 engine, the 4586. So we're going to find out a little bit more about what's involved in this engine swap. So Brian, for a start, Putting a 458 engine into a Toyota 86, not the most common engine swap, probably fair to say. What was the sort of impetus behind that decision? Uh, it was about doing something unique and different in the industry, and we wanted something to showcase our abilities, and we thought, why not put something so rare into a chassis that Ryan is so familiar with? Uh, there's no doubt it certainly stood out and uh, it's made a big impact on social media. Also, fair to say, the thing does sound pretty amazing, particularly with those open headers. Now, one of the things with the drifting we have seen over the last few years, though, is uh, the power figures that the professional drifters are using is continuing to climb, and sort of around that 1,000 horsepower mark seems pretty normal, along with Ryan's uh, Pro Drift car. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere near that with a 4.5 litre V8 naturally aspirated. What is it currently making, give or take? It makes about 500 horsepower of the wheels. Now, is that a problem for Ryan when he's used to more like double that power? No, we set the car up for the horsepower, and he manages because professional driver. Now, obviously, fitting the engine, the mechanical side of that is just what it is. You've got to fit the engine into the, the chassis. Uh, there's some problems with the 458 engine, particularly with that inlet manifold being so large. But aside from that, once you've actually got the engine fitted, I just want to talk about the electronics side of things there. So the complexity with late model cars is a lot of the electronics modules in the car rely on communications between the factory ECU. So we remove that, and all of a sudden, that communication isn't there. So for example, air conditioning, uh, ABS, maybe the gauge cluster doesn't work anymore. So how is it possible to get around that? Obviously in a, a purpose-built uh, drift car, not such an issue, but if you were doing this swap for a, a daily driven road car, uh, how can that be dealt with? Uh, you're going to have to get into the CAN bus of the system. And modern electronics and cars rely on CAN bus to deliver the communication between the different systems, as you mentioned, as power steering, ABS, gauge cluster, ECU, to have everything work in harmony with less wires and things like that to, you know, get the job done. So in this case, that CAN bus you've mentioned there is a two-wire bus that basically runs around the car and all of the messages between those different electronic modules are uh, included on that CAN bus. So as soon as we remove the factory Toyota ECU uh, to do an engine swap, some of those messages are interrupted. So uh, can you tell us about the ECU fitted to the car, first of all? It has a Motec M142. Okay, so that ECU is one of Motec's newer M1 range. The 142 is designed for direct injection. Correct. But the tricky part with this is that it's possible for the M1 ECU to replicate those CAN messages. And in particular, using a slightly modified package here, this isn't a Motec package. Can you tell us about uh, the firmware that the ECU is running? Yeah, it's a John Reed Racing firmware package. Uh, I built the looms for this car and uh, I've known John for many years and actually worked out of the same facility as him and um, we were able to work together and get everything done that we needed to do and in the process of him making the firmware he made it where you could swap this into a stock 8.6 and have the AC and power steering and ABS and everything work even though it's probably not an engine swap you'll see every day. So that's basically within his custom firmware here, he's just replicated all of those CAN messages that would keep all of those factory electronic components happy and functioning as normal? Yes, that's correct. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the, the package in this car. So what's the uh, gearbox backing that engine? It is a Fortin 5-speed sequential. Uh, with uh, sequential gearboxes, often uh, incorporate their flat shift with a dog engagement gearbox. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use the clutch to upshift, you can stay flat on the throttle. But in order to do that, that requires some intervention from the ECU to, to let the dogs unload. So you can tell us how that's being done in the Fortin transmission? Uh, the Fortin transmission has a remote shifter and it actually has a potentiometer on the shifter that notices the rotation of the shifter. It's a little bit of a different solution than we're used to. I'm usually using a strain gauge that will feel the weight of the shifter pull by the driver and then uh, implement a cut in the ECU to unload the dogs and make the shift happen. 
So do you see the potentiometer being uh, an advantage or improvement over a strain gauge or is it a, a bit of a disadvantage in this car? It's not how we normally would do it and it seems a little slow. So in a competition format we would put a proper strain gauge in for what this thing does. It works okay and it came with the shifter that we purchased so we just move forward. And again this isn't uh, Ryan's pro competition car so it's, it's close enough to get the job done? Yeah, it's more for him to sound cool on the way in, you know. Same thing that we have anti-lag on the car, but it's an NA car, just so it does a lot of pops and bangs and things off throttle. I think it's fair to say that that is all part of the spectacle of drifting. It's what everyone's come to expect. Now just coming back to the power level of the engine, uh, again we mentioned 4.5 litre V8, not the most powerful engine in the world. And uh, you have added nitrous to the engine. Can you talk us through that nitrous system? So being a five speed, the torque band of the engine was fairly narrow so he'd find himself in a position on the engine that it wouldn't want to blow the tires off so easily so we decided to fit a nitrous kit just to fill the middle of the engine uh, to make it feel like it has more torque than it really does or you know add the torque that we needed in some places uh, we ran it to the top but it makes such good power from seven to nine that we didn't really need it there so you could really uh, refer to it as anti-lag for a naturally aspirated engine? Sure, or we kind of put it in for the spool even though it doesn't have a turbo. Uh, just made it feel fuller. I guess the other aspect is that it's more a case of just that instant hit of torque to actually get the car to initially wheel spin and once uh, it is wheel spinning we don't need so much torque to con continue that momentum, is that fair to say? Sure, when you clutch out you need the car to be drivable and if it's loaded up and doesn't want to spin the tires, he can't pedal it and then he'll be using the clutch a lot and then you wear out the clutch quicker. So it, it makes the car more drivable and more reliable on the clutch in. Alright, so Ryan's obviously no stranger to the 8.6 chassis. Uh, can you talk us through the rest of the modifications that you need to make to an 8.6 to turn it into something that is competitive as a drift car? Talking about the, the suspension front and rear, maybe the differential setup that you're using as well? So, starting at the front, it's, uh, it's all Weiss fab. Um, it works fairly well. There's some things we do with the steering rack position that is different from the kit that you buy to get the Ackerman and the way it needs to work and self-steer and things that keep him happy. Uh, moving to the back of the car, also just Weiss Fab, regular FRS, or I'm sorry, GT86 subframe, but we use a Toyota Super diff that trickled down from the Pro Car program. Um, it is the same 8-inch ring gear because we use the NA diff in the U.S. Um, but the design of the case has some different wings and we found that it stays together. We get them new from Toyota and there's a few ring and pinion options. So we're able to put it where it works well with this five speed and narrow torque band and so on. We're seeing it in most of the pro drift cars now, the uh, quick change winter's rear end is really the, the go-to, allowing you to uh, make very fast changes to final drive ratio, just not necessary for a, a demonstration car like this? Uh, no. I mean, we make it work. All right, look, Brian, thanks for some insight there. It's been great to find out a little bit more about the integration of that 458 engine. It is uh, definitely a crowd favourite with the way it sounds, and uh, we wish you all the best for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.